What's up everybody, you've probably already heard about it, but the PE civil exam is getting a complete makeover in 2024. The NCEES released this past October brand new specifications for all five civil PE exams, and this was definitely not one of those small tweaks that you're very accustomed to usually every five, six years that they go through this. This one was massive. So it's uh, it's not only going to impact how we prepare for the exam, but it also says a lot what's changing in the civil engineering industry as a whole. So if passing the civil PE exam is on your radar or you've been preparing for this thing for quite a while now, then you're going to want to watch this video to the very end to learn a couple of things. First, you're going to want to learn what the changes actually were. Second thing you're going to want to learn is the pros and cons of those changes for test takers like you. And the third thing you want to pay attention to is how it affects your exam prep even if you're already me deep into this thing hey i'm isaac okison here with civil engineering academy helping you crush your professional civil engineering exams which also includes the civil pe exam so stick with me to the end because this is one that we're going to tell you everything that we possibly know about this massive change and what it means for you as you get geared up to prepare for your pe exam so we'll see you in a minute Whoop. Okay, let's start with the major changes that are happening first. As you probably know, the NCEES is getting rid of the breadth portion of the exam, um, making it almost kind of a depth exam only that's tailored specifically to your particular depth exam. So out of the five disciplines, they're getting rid of the breadth section among all of them. So just material that's related to your own discipline. But different from what you've seen online, they don't simply keep to topics starting at number nine that you're talking about your depth exam and you're familiar with the old specifications. The specifications back then had topics one through eight, which were the breadth exam, and they were the same among all the exams. But that is no more. So what they actually did is they beefed up the depth content in each of the five disciplines by adding topics in there from the breadth portion that relates to it and then eliminating everything else that has to do with um, basically your breadth stuff. So you have nothing that you're going to be asked that has to deal with anything outside of the discipline that you've selected. Now, many people love that stuff. Many people don't. Depends on where you're at. So for example, the new specifications for like the structural exam, they do not have topics related to hydrology or hydraulics, but they've added topics related to structural, the structural portion from the breadth portion itself. But one example is soil classification and soil properties and material test methods and specification conformance. These were topics that were found in the breadth portion of the old specification but they still show up in, you know, the new specifications, but they fall under those depth focus uh, areas. And so, you know, many people are probably thinking, is it all depth related? Am I just going to have 80 questions that are extremely tough? And that's probably not the case. But all of those topics that are related to your own discipline, that's all you're going to be fine. So hopefully you've got that. Now, even though this was a massive change, I don't want you to stress over that yet. All five of the exams will start the, with the new specifications in April of 2024. So if you've already booked an exam out already and it's before that date, you're still going to get the same exam that we're all used to and everything else you know about preparing for it remains exactly the same. Then in 2024, in April of 2024, that's when the NCES actually makes the switch with new questions that are related to the new specification, which are questions that are be focused on only really your depth topics so no more branching out no more figuring out what breadth topics that aren't related to what you're doing everything will be only asked related to questions for your discipline all right so now you know what the major change is and when that's going to take effect there are some things that are also going to change in april of 2024 then these things you probably have not heard yet Number one, you're going to have brand new subtopics that were added to some of these exams. One example of this is chemical, electrical, and thermal properties of soils. 
So this was a topic not previously found. These are subtopics that are added. All right, the second thing that really changed is codes and standards. These are always updated, but they're gonna be updated again in 2024 of April. And a few of these codes and standards were even removed completely. The ASCE 7, for example, is now the edition that is published in 2017, while the UFC 3-220-01 for the geotech folks was completely removed. So you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to that. Now, the third thing that changed is the number of questions for each topic. It, uh, it's gonna be now about two to three times more than before. So for example, the number of questions on roadside and cross-section design alone can now be anything from seven questions to 11. And this topic used to only have three to five. So if you're thinking about that, that's more than double for that particular topic. Now, the fourth thing that you're gonna wanna pay attention to with these changes is the transportation and water resources exam had one brand new topic added to the depth content of the old specification, and that is project planning for transportation and project site work for water resources, both of them coming from a combination of past breadth topics. So you can see how they've incorporated those back in in just a different spot. So the fifth thing you want to pay attention to is that the PE reference handbook to use starting in April of 2024 is actually going to be upgraded to version 2.0. So not even the current version, which is 1.2, um, you're, you're not going to want to use that. So even though the concepts remain the same regardless of the change in the specifications, they did make some changes to that handbook. And this is what we know so far. So one of the things they changed is that they removed the simply supported beam slopes and deflections table that you'll find in there. That's gone. They updated and removed diagrams related to crane stability. That's gone. They added some stuff too. They added the total head formula. They updated the culvert flow classification. They added methane, which is CH4 production formula. So, you know, pay attention to those things about what they added, what they removed. The handbooks are often updated um, along with specifications and often even more so. So pay attention to that. Now, the final thing you want to pay attention to is the exam registration fee, which might be the worst part about all this whole thing and that is is that the fee is going to jump up to four hundred dollars starting in january of 2024 so you don't even get the benefit of waiting till april for that thing to hit now like i said this is probably going to be the saddest part of all the changes so far but it just is what it is and things everywhere are increasing you know what i'm talking about all right, I also want to talk about what is not changing about these this exam. So now we've gone through all of those changes that we discussed. I just want to do a quick overview of what remains exactly the same. So you're going to prepare, you know, so you're well prepared for the exam. So the exam still has 80 questions. That's not changing. It still lasts a total of nine hours. You'll have a 10 minute tutorial at the beginning. You'll be able to have a 50 minute break. So the, the composition of questions for the time limits are all still the same. It's still computer based. It's still a CBT exam. It's still closed book, except for the reference handbook that you have, um, which we talked about is version 2.0 starting in April. You're also still gonna have codes and standards that are available to your exam in PDF form that you'll be able to search with codes and standards on the left your questions on the right all of that jazz is not changing so it's also still available year round so you can take this thing up to three times in a year uh, within each different quarter that you can take it and it still requires four plus years of work experience as an EIT working under a PE in most states you definitely want to check into that some states do allow two years so uh, make sure you understand your own state's division of professional licensing. But those changes, you know, those, there's no change to that. There was no mention of theory and code questions going away. And given the depth focus nature of the new exam, you probably still want to get ready for those theory based questions as they hit those a lot on these exams these days. And I'm talking about 10 to 15 for that morning portion and the same 10 to 15 for afternoon. Now, it's still going to be a morning and an afternoon test. I still think you're going to have easier and harder type questions, but they all fall under those main categories that you're going to find in your depth exam. Now, the big question that may be on your mind right now is why in the world are they changing the topics covered in the exam now? 
Well, let's answer that question. The NCES sends out surveys to licensed engineers working in the industry to get to know what knowledge areas and skills are being required from them on the job in the real world. Then they use those results of those surveys basically to update the specifications uh, and to test you on those areas and skills that you need to be competent in your own work. So because they use this information coming from the industry to shape the exam, the change says a lot about where the civil engineering industry is actually headed as a whole. What this means basically is that the general civil engineer, one who knows the basics of other civil engineering disciplines, is pretty much dead, which is kind of sad. The profession is now gravitating towards the specialist civil engineer, someone who's an expert in that particular subject. Subject. So the exam is now kind of shifting to test you in the particular field that you plan to make a career out of. Now this has both pros and cons in my opinion, both from a test taking perspective and from a practicing civil engineering perspective. So let's get into those right now, starting with the pros. So the first pro that I can think of and the, the first thing that comes to mind is basically that your exam prep should be a lot simpler. You don't need to study general civil engineering topics outside of your particular discipline anymore which is kind of nice. This should save you some time on how to study or what to study because now you only have about 10 topics or less to cover instead of 18 plus topics that you had before. Also, it can make the exam prep less of a burden since you won't have to study topics that don't come very easy to you. You're very focused, laser focused on the discipline that you're going into. So the second thing I can think of as a pro is that the exam will probably be easier for you. All the questions on the exam will be about topics topics related to your own discipline. And given that they may still have those easier breath type questions in the mix, they will be about your own discipline, which can make them even easier for you because that's where your head is studying for the majority of this exam anyway. So that's kind of nice. All right. The third thing that I can think of is that your work experience in your discipline is actually going to help a lot more. And that's because you'll be dealing with this stuff on a daily basis with the topics that they're going to test you on as well. And you're going to be extremely familiar, hopefully, with the codes and standards that are going to be used on the exam simply because you use them at work. Now, this has always kind of been the case because you should choose the depth exam that's related to what you do at work. I think that's a good reason to do that. But if not, and you're you're going to choose a, an exam topic, you're definitely going to dive into those things. And this can save you time when you're going to be searching for things in the codes during the exam because hopefully you're already used to using those things. All right, the fourth pro that I can think of is that you will be an expert in your subject matter. This is both a pro and a con, but let's first look at the positive side of this is the way I would like to look at it. So while it is important to know this, the other stuff from other disciplines, civil engineers tend to dive into their own area when they start working anyway. So the new version of this exam is going to make sure you are competent in the field you plan to make a career out of. After all, the projects you'll be reviewing and approving and stamping, all of those will be in your particular field. So that is kind of nice, and it has to be a pro. All right, so let's talk about the cons of some of this stuff, um, because we've already hit all the pros that I can think of. So the first con that I can think of is that you're going to lose basically that inherent knowledge that comes from this existing exam that's been around for years. And... You know, all the information that's out there has been built and tailored to meet the exam as it is today. And it really hasn't changed much over, over many, many years. But with the new changes, all of that material is going to be either outdated or invalid. Now, I get it. Engineering topics are going to be the same, but you're going to want it in the format you like it in. And that makes sense. So all of that stuff will have to be updated that's out there. And it does change a lot of things with how you use that material to prepare for this exam. All right, the second thing that I can think of is that the exam will be more conceptual this time. You're going to really need to know your depth stuff to pass this test. They're going to test you on the knowledge of your particular discipline, so you're going to need a awesome understanding of the topics at a conceptual level with way less calculations that you can use to try to get away with. It's just not going to be that easy anymore. And theory questions can be easy if you know them right off the bat, but I'll tell you this, the number 
number one complaint I get about the existing exam is not going in feeling prepared for those. And I can guarantee you that they're going to have just as much, if not more, on the exam with the way these specifications are written now. All right, the third thing is that decoupling may not be a good choice now, and that's because of the pro number two that I talked about before. Um, your work experience and your discipline is going to help you big time because it'll get you used to all the topics that you're going to be tested on in your particular area. And you're going to become more familiar with the codes and standards for your particular discipline. All right, finally, the fourth thing I can think of is you're going to lose basically the well-rounded engineer. Now, this is the negative side of the specialization route. You know, you're going to be comp competent in your particular field and you know that's going to be necessary, but no civil engineering project that you work on is in a vacuum. Your projects that you work on are, a, you know, a variety of different people that come together to make this thing work. So any discipline interfaces with other disciplines in the real world. So it's nice and I think it is needed to know how your work affects the work of another civil engineer and who's going to take what you did and use it to complete the next phase of the project. I think it's very helpful to work with other engineers. It's also extremely helpful to know what challenges that they face because, well, the PE exam used to test you on some of those things. Before we wrap this thing up, I'd like to touch on what all of this changes in your studies for the exam. And there are two situations here. First, if you've been prepping for this thing with plans to take it next year before April, and especially if you already booked your exam in the first quarter, you're going to want to stick to your plans that you've already got. You've already spent the money. You've already spent on prep material, all the time you've put into this. You've already studied breadth topics, plus the just the, the reason to cancel the exam, the fee to cancel your exam is $50, and that's just a pain in the butt. So I definitely don't recommend you doing that. So keep up with your studies, make the most out of every study resource that's out there that you can get your hands on, and uh, make sure you finish hard and strong. When the exam switched over to the CBT exam, where we got the handbook, that handbook is simply just a book of equations and figures, okay? That's it. It does not teach the topics that you will need to understand and concepts for your particular field. And and that's the truth of it. Plus, you also need practice problems in general, so the CERM is still useful and still valid if you're in the hunt for resources. But you'll just need to focus on the topics now for your particular area, and you can leave the rest alone. I'll leave you also a link for that below that you can check out, check out and get 15% off from PPI if you're interested in still in getting resources, because I still think those books are still valid, even with the specification changes. And also, the NCES has published updated versions of their own practice exams as well. You'll need a practice exam directly from the test makers to get a real fill for it. I recommend that to everybody. Just understand they're not going to test you on the questions that you're going to find in there, but at least you'll get the look and fill of the real exam. And I always recommend that. And I'll make sure we leave a link uh, to that as well. Now, when it comes to uh, your own studies, nothing changes. You're still going to need to give yourself a very hard deadline. You need to create a study schedule. You need to block off time so you can study, and then you actually have to commit to doing it, right? There's just no other way around it. All of those things never change. All right, everybody, that's it for this video. This change was certainly massive and certainly not one of those small tweaks that we're very used to seeing from the NCES. This will change a lot of things when it comes to preparing for the PE exam, including courses that are out there, study material that's out there, and everything else, including ours here at Civil Engineering Academy. We're currently giving our PE review course and all of our materials a complete makeover, and we plan to have that finished with, uh, in conjunction with the new specifications in 2024. If you want to be the first to know when the course is ready and is updated, just just go to civilengineeringacademy.com slash PE update to join our wait list. We'll make sure that you get an email as soon as that thing goes live. All right, again, that's found at civilengineeringacademy.com slash PE update, and you can find that link below in the description as well. In the meantime, don't forget to share this video with fellow civil engineers that are out there who are going to be taking the PE exam soon so they know what changed and they're further prepared on this. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can get more information what we publish here. We have tons of practice problems that we release all the time, interviews that we do on our podcast. So make sure you hit that subscribe button below if you haven't already and make 
make sure you tap the notification bell to be the first to hear about these when we go live with them. If you need anything else that you want help with regarding your exams, definitely check us out at civilengineeringacademy.com. You'll find everything you need there to help you on your own journey to crush your civil PE exam. And that's going to be it. Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you next time. Bye. Whoa.